most of you were here last week. Was there anyone who wasn't in attendance last week? Just for a second. Okay. All right, so let's bring us up to date. Uh, last week we met and we talked about uh, the fact that there are uh, numerous things that need to be done to the worship center. It's been about 20 years since it was last remodeled. Uh, we mentioned carpet, pews, uh, overall decor, lighting, uh, the stage, cleaning everything very well. So those are some of the topics that came up. Additionally, uh, we talked about the need for nursery workers so that we could have people come uh, and, and enjoy worship and be able to take their children into the nursery. And so that was one other topic that came up. Another one that came up right after the meeting, and I think uh, Brother Roy might mention this, is accessibility. And so those are a couple of things that we talked about last time. We had a great discussion. Uh, everybody was unified in, in, uh, in expressing these needs that uh, we need to address. And so uh, we'll, we'll talk about a path forward here tonight in just a few minutes. But we'll let Brother Roy at this point now just give us any updates to information that you received over the week. Because I'm sure some of the surveys came in and or, and or people called, contacted uh, you during the week. So let's just let's give a report of that. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was a good week. Got some uh, some good feedback, and uh, I have a, a correction to make. Last week I used the term fluorescent lighting. I should have said incandescent lighting. Our current lighting is incandescent, not fluorescent. I was attacked twice by professional electricians on the way out, having used the term fluorescent. Yes, so did they. Nevertheless, they took the opportunity to uh, beat me over the head appropriately because I misspoke. It is an incandescent, and we're still going to change it to LED, though, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I did misspeak on that. Um, thanks again uh, for, um, for those coming out. And uh, just to reiterate, one of the things that was brought up and it just had, had not registered is we must uh, deal with uh, wheelchair and accessibility issues and put that in the forefront of anything, and that has to be done thinking about from the car to the worship center and uh, making sure that not just is there a, uh, a where the, to park, but how to get into the building, into the worship center, into a very prominent place uh, comfortably with a family, uh, with a family that... Uh, that they can come in and, and be that, and we need to have that to the forefront uh, of our thinking of how we can accommodate that. And so we will put that a very high priority and, and address those issues and make that forefront uh, of our thinking on, on uh, how we reconfigure this uh, space down here. Uh, also, uh, one of the things uh, that was brought up brought, there, in all of this, there, we don't want there to be any trepidation about taking the Myrtle Grove Baptist Sanctuary and turning it into any kind of a new age center of modern modernity. This will not become a place where you have to bring a flashlight to read the Bible. That is going to be so dark in here with the lighting that you'll need or that you'll be pounded out because it'll be so loud. That, that's not our intention. Our intention is that this is going to be a place of worship where you can come and seat yourself and prepare for worship and meditate on and hear God's word and, and worship together in song and have that atmosphere that is worshipful not a concert venue, not anything like that at all. And so we don't want there to be any fear to thinking we're going to change this in any kind of drastic way. Correct, Pastor? I mean, we're not going to go uh, to some kind of auditorium, you know, like in a concert hall. I mean, that's not the intent at all. 
It's just to refresh things, new coats of paint, maybe, uh, you know, some different colors. That, that's what we're talking about here. Um, you know, not turning the lights down low. Uh, that, that's, so please, please, if you hear anybody saying that's, that's not our intent at all to make those kinds of changes. So, so don't worry about that. Yes, uh, we want lighting that is going to enhance uh, the worship aesthetic right. and therefore dynamics, you know, where we can add color, we can, we can spotlight certain lights and uh, certain, areas of, certain areas of the platform and different things like that. Uh, but if you look up right now at the lighting, if that, if that was on anyone's mind, like if you can count how many, I think I've counted maybe about 30 bulbs that are out all together in the worship center. So, I mean, how much? You counted 43. Okay, 43 bulbs are out in the worship center right now. So, right now, it's not as bright as it could be in here for when we're reading God's Word, we're fellowshipping together, and, and when we're entering into the worship center as well, you know, we want to make sure entering and exiting that there's plenty of light so people can see and they don't trip and fall. So there's a lot of reasons why we need to address the lighting, and it's not to make it into a concert hall or, you know, a, a rock concert type venue, not at all. <laughs> okay, so, um, so last week I charged you with looking around, and I said, spend ne- looking around, seeing what ideas you would have, and that we would listen. So this week, it's time for myself and others to listen to what you have to say. Okay. So this is your opportunity. Remember, we, do, we are recording, and we are live streaming, so if there's anything that we say that needs to be on here... Uh, it needs to be said on here. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. But we're you, recording it. We're so. recording. So yeah, that's fine. I hate these things. Go ahead. All right. I've noticed over the years our upholstery is getting dirtier and more soil from people spilling drinks and water and what have you and children walking on them. Yes, ma'am. So that is a priority in my book. Mm-hmm. Plus... The changing of the colors. I'm tired of the green and the drab going on. And those were just my ideas. I also would like to get rid of the paneling up front. I don't okay. like the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> Someone like that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Lord, you said uh, wheelchair accessibility. You talking about taking some pews out, making a section for the wheelchairs, or let them roll in and let them sit where they want to down the aisles or are you going to I think we would have both options okay I think some people that would be the most comfortable when people some people don't they're in the motorized chairs one of our dear sisters in this church the best thing for her is to be able to stay in that chair so we want to be able to accomplish that but some people would and we know others who that would be the best thing so we know we want to accomplish that some folks would want to just leave a chair and go to, to a seat. So we want to be able to do both. And that would be a decision how to accomplish that. It would be a decision going forward for, the, for an ad hoc committee to look at. For a wheelchair to come in. Well, let's let's speak it into here so everyone can hear In other you. words, uh, they wanted to sit out front or back there in that corner or over there. Like there's an opening right there. You could put two mm-hmm. in there or take out some more where you can put three. If they want to sit like that, they want to sit with their family more likely. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know if you was going to try to remove some pews, some pieces, and let them get in instead of being out here. Okay. Is yeah, I, I definitely understand the, yeah. the question. I think everyone does. Uh, one thing that we've talked about that came up this week um, and I can let Brother Roy uh, address it for whoever spoke to him about that. But I've had people speak to me about this. If we're going to take the pews out to replace the carpet, maybe we ought to think about replacing the pews with chairs so that those chairs can, be mo- can move to accommodate uh, different people. And they would look good and be more comfortable than an, an old rickety pew. Uh, but that's, that's one idea. And we also have 
the, we also have op, other options with that as well because they do make stadium seating. They make new pews. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that we could do. But it was, it was also addressed last Wednesday night that many of the pews ha, are, are broken. Uh, the springs are broken and different, the cushions need to be replaced or whatever. So the pews are going to need a lot of uh, refreshing, not just the upholstery, but actually... Uh, repairing them as well, so the cost of that could be astronomical. Well, yeah, when we look when we look at, at taking these pews, which are basically uh, they were in '74. Uh, Jean Ann said that she used to play the piano when she started here. When that was before I that was before she met me, back when <laughs> she, when she was, you know, still nice. Before I ruined her. As her <laughs> okay, mother. you better watch it now. Yeah. Uh, well, I came to this church to find a wife. I'll tell anybody that. And I found her. So I was a Presbyterian up there at Fairfield. You all remember Fairfield Presbyterian? There was no women. That, why did we talk about that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so it, it might cost more to repair these pews than to go to an alternative. So if that happens, then that, that changes how we look. But one of the things we want to make sure, if we're going to do that, we need to look at the OSHA requirements for handicap, make sure we're in compliance with that. So as we take a look at that. Yes, and I'll, I'll say this. We're, we have expressed needs, and that's, that's what we're trying to do in the open forum discussion is express these needs so we can get them all uh, itemized, and then we can hand that off to an ad hoc committee. And so uh, my suggestion going forward is to take all of these uh, ideas, put them together, and then elect a, an ad hoc committee. We would use the uh, nominating committee, uh, sorry, excuse me, the committee on committees to do that. Committee on committees would find the people to serve on that from various different committees and teams. And then, uh, and then also we mentioned that we needed a professional consultant that would uh, be familiar with interior design. And so that person would also come and inform the ad hoc committee. And then they would bring regular reports and they would, um, the church would vote on the decisions that they make. Yes, ma'am. Let me, let me bring you this. Excuse me. Technically, we're not supposed to have people in the aisle, so there's mm -hmm. uh, things that need to be thought about when we're doing Yeah, this it's, it's similar all. to what, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all part of that OSHA mm -hmm. conversation that we have to have is the word we sit people exactly it, right. It would, be, it would be similar to if we shorten the pew, you know, yeah. which that could be, I mean, that would be an option to shorten these pews to allow for handic handicap accessibility there, but that, and that's the case in the back. But some people, many people want to be with their families whenever they say, yeah. they, okay, so, yeah. yes, ma'am. Just as a suggestion, before we would hire an interior designer, um, I think we might have some resources within our own um, structure here, our own um, the church people, body, you mean? church body, yeah. Mm -hmm. And perhaps people could write in suggestions or even sketches of their ideas before we went outside of the church body. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, my opinion, the big square up there <laughs> um, that enhances the cross, it seems to be overpowering. Uh, I don't know, that would probably involve whatever you do with, you know, the paneling, mm -hmm. if anything, like painting it, but maybe, I don't know the configuration of the baptismal uh, area, so maybe that was a necessity, it had to be that wide, I don't know. And just one more thing, um, <laughs> again, just my preference, the lighting, for some reason the green on that cross bothers me. <laughs> I think of uh, Jesus and God as the light of our light life and it should be shining and bright mm -hmm. 
Thank you. All good suggestions. Thank you. Thank you uh oh, so much. she wants to say again, Miss Beverly. I mean, I shouldn't have come. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have. Anyway, I personally prefer a pew, only because we women have purses, Bibles, and so could we do a combination of both chairs and pews, and and kind of mix and mingle them to where we who want a pew could still have one. Yeah. Pick out the ones that aren't falling apart. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that would be an that would be a question for the ad hoc committee to look at. I think. Um, but I will say this, these type chairs, and they make many different types of chairs, so don't, don't just have in your idea that we're just going to have all, you know, individual chair, individual chair, individual chair, because these chairs link together to form a pew, uh, and they do have pockets in them so that you can put, there's actually more storage type area in these chairs than there would be in a pew uh, with just the rack, but, there, but there's many different configurations that we can come up with so the options are wide open but uh but thank you for bringing up the the need there and uh, that's definitely something that that ad hoc committee would need to address anybody else yes joe i'll repeat yours joe so join He's talking about uh, if we bring it up and if we change layout, we have to bring it up in code to ADA. Yeah, yes. Disability Act. So y'all got to think about that. That's a bridge that may be totally different from what we got. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay. That's why we want to be careful and to refresh and not remodel, because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to go over that threat. That's one of the reasons why we need a, a designer, a professional designer, because we don't want to go over the threshold of remodeling to where we get into that where you know you make enough changes where you have to change it, yeah and we don't want to have to get that far down the road yeah somebody who could say whoa no don't change that yeah is our thinking mr george thank you is it ready it's ready uh, I don't want to be out of order here, but I've missed on out on a lot of this. But I I don't know just what you got planned for it. But I, when we get through, I'm not going to leave the church or anything, whether I like it or not, you know. But I want it to look like a sanctuary where we come together and worship, and not have a stage show. You, do you follow me? I'm an old school. Of the, uh, I think I'd be out of order, but I just wanted. No, I think I hear your heart. I don't know specifically what you have in mind, but I think I understand your sentiment. Up on the uh, stage, we'll call it. I'd like to see uh, something of a barrier between the rows of seats for the matter of decorum for the ladies and so forth when they're seated up there. I like I like a choir. Uh, a modesty rail is that is right. that what you have have in mind? Yeah, a modesty right. rail. Not necessarily what we used to have, but I like it so that they can feel comfortable. Okay, it's a house of worship, not a stage show. Okay. Amen. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm still, uh, I have not gotten near as many responses as I would have thought that I would have gotten over something that this important. <laughs> what is going to happen in all of this is where there's going to be a point in time where your input is going to be, oh, well, you had your chance. Yeah. Okay. That, that will come. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, okay, well, you had your chance. And then it's going to be, yeah, well, oh, you had your chance. <laughs> okay. So you still have your chance. Okay, folks. <laughs> oh, that, there you go now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Natalie. Um, so how 
we're going to organize this. In a sense, I, we hear some ideas, mm -hmm. and it sounds like we have some votes. Hey, I like this idea. Oh, I like this mm -hmm. idea. Is there any sort of voting that will occur, or do you have to be on that committee in order to, in a sense? Right. What, because, will, okay. what will happen is, is as we, in, a, in another couple of weeks, we'll put together this ad hoc committee that the pastor talks about, and we'll start fleshing out the ideas. Some of the ideas will not need to come, will be in the background kind of ideas. The technical stuff with having to change the lighting, which will, you will not see any of that. That's not the kind of thing that we'll need to talk about. When we talk about, when this committee comes in and we start looking at options for seating, and we say, oh yeah, well, we want to go to chairs, and here's the price points for all this stuff, that will come to the church, of course. And when the designer comes in and says, These are the, the, this is the color palettes and this is the design for the front, the church will see all of that, absolutely. And you'll okay. get up and down votes on those kinds of things, absolutely, yes. It will, it will come as a presentation yes. from your ad hoc committee yes. to the church. They'll bring mm -hmm. a report. And then at that point, you'll get to say yes or no to whatever they've mm -hmm. done. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you'll get to sit down and say, no, I don't want that color, I want this color. But it does mean you'll get to say yes or no you know, to whatever they've put together to yeah. present. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. I agree with what Roy said. There's going to be a lot of people that say, well, I, I don't like that, and it's too late. My thoughts are, could we take 15, 20 minutes one Sunday morning when we've got a larger group who won't come up two weeks later and say, I don't like that. It, present it to them before we go forward with anything. So I just think the whole group, you, you are going to have, and you will have people with hurt feelings who are going to leave the church because they didn't know anything about it and so on and so forth. So we need to have some way to present it to the larger group. We, we, could, we could do that. We could, we'll have a PowerPoint that we'll send out and, uh, so that people can see this in, on, at, at home and you know, have that visualization of what it's going to look like and, and all of that uh, stuff. So yeah, because we don't want to surprise anybody. Uh, Roy, another way we can do that on Sunday is, uh, and we've done this in the past with major things, uh, just like we're having right now, we, in the afternoon, we, we had uh, open forum as well, so most people, like people that work and all, could be here for it, so we could do that too, mm -hmm. you know, on a Sunday after service sure. in the afternoon. Yes, we could, we could certainly have a, a fellowship, dinner on the ground, something like that, yeah. and then have, come back to the worship center and have an open forum. For folks that wanted to but we're going that, what we we're going do to do is we're going to start putting together the proposal for you at this point in time we'll still take it but we're going to start working on it because if we just right now keep it you know keep we don't want to kick this down the road another three or four months because pretty soon it'll be the end of 2021 and so we're going to start putting together a proposal for you and start getting some of these designs because it will take a long time and so we're going to start working on this. Uh, just as a thought, if we get rid of the pews, what about the hymn books? Or are we going to try to uh, remove the hymn books and just go strictly on uh, screens? Well, all I know is I have all the hymns memorized. So, <laughs> so, so let's just say, for Here instance, we if, we, <laughs> if, if this is the chair that we chose instead of pews, let's just say, for instance, if they did, these have hymn racks on them. Um, so there's a, there's a rack beneath the chair, the seat, as well as a pocket behind the chair that could hold anything. I mean, so uh, especially a, a hymnal. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Be careful. It's a, it's a lot larger area for your rear end to sit on. <laughs> it's, 
It just is. Uh, me and Beverly went to a funeral at Pine Summit. A friend of ours passed away, and they just got rid of their pews about eight years ago, and their chairs are blue, and they're really, really pretty. Mm-hmm. So, and they got pockets in the back for the books, your Bible, notebooks. So I, I liked it. Don't have to do the whole thing like that. They did, but mm-hmm. it really looked nice. So you'll have a place for your hammer and your Bible. Okay. All right, we're almost out of time, so we got time for maybe one more comment, and then we need. Okay, hold on just a second, Miss Dallas. Let's get to Mr. Johnny, and then we'll. We have uh, wires scattered all over the place up there, and they've done a pretty good job of getting them back out of the way. But that stage is hollow; mm-hmm. it's not solid. We could put runs of wiring under there and have them just come out uh, there, there's something we can do and if OSHA comes in mm-hmm. and you have wires scattered out around and not going to be good yes I, I believe the stage the uh, platform is uh, one of the bigger areas that will need to be addressed and so that's something that the ad hoc committee will work on I have uh, the, the personal desire that we have members of the AV team on the uh, ad hoc committee, and they'll know exactly what we need to do to address that. And so uh, that's definitely something we've thought about and that they have thought about. And uh, okay, Miss Dallas. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. We'll look into that sooner rather than later uh, because that's something that we can address. Yeah, I read that yesterday. So we're working on that. Okay. Yes, we can address that very soon. All right, Ms. Ruth, I'm sorry, but we're going to we're gonna have to let this be the last, last comment. Okay. Unless Just somebody real quick, has a and maybe I've missed it. Uh, have we talked about finances? No. Oh, okay. No, we haven't yet. <laughs> Um, what we did talk about, what we have mentioned, is that we'll, we'll do a time of prayer and fasting, and then we'll enter into capital fundraising campaign. Now, that's, that's, a, that's the clearest option at this point for us, unless someone else has a better idea. That's what it seems to be, it seems like that would be the best option for our church, because we don't want to, we don't want to enter, incur any debt. Uh, through this project. It's, some, it's something that we need to cash flow. Uh, we probably do have some, some, maybe some funds that we might decide that we could tap into somewhere, but to maybe some seed money. But, um, but, o- but overall, I think the best idea is that we have a capital fundraising campaign. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's something for the ad hoc committee to bring forth and for us to present. Okay. Thank you so much. Think about it and call me or stop me in the hallway or whatever. Yeah, Roy has been tasked with collecting all the data, putting all that together, and bringing reports to us. And so, uh, and then, so he's got uh, he's got an open phone line for you if you want to call him and talk to him about this stuff. And he'll he'll make notes of everything that you say and report that back to the group. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brother Roy. Um, I will say, um, first of all, thank you so much for being here and coming in unity and let's talking about this in a reasonable way. Um, I will say, anytime we start to to do something, move forward in any way, make progress, that's an opportunity for the devil to, to, to put something in the spoke and derail us and get us off track, and we don't want that to happen. So, so even now, even before we enter into that time of prayer and fasting that we're going to call on you to do, uh, be in prayer, just and 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 then watch yourself too. If we have negative thoughts or negative feelings, let's address them the the proper way. And uh, we, we, if you feel something very strongly, put that in writing, submit it to the office, and we'll make sure we address it. And then, uh, last thing. 
uh, the next time we come together for business, we'll have, hopefully, the uh, committee on committees have a, bring us a report for the people that they'd like to have on that committee. And uh, we definitely have some suggestions, and so if the committee on committees wants to come by the office to talk to us about that, we'll get that done, and then we'll present that. Okay, let's take, a, let's take about five minutes if you need to go to the restroom or anything like that, and then, then we'll